Hello guys, so this is a Monday lecture and we're gonna continue talking about uh, MOSFET amplifiers and the use of MOSFET in amplifier circuits. And you know, today we're gonna start the real work. Okay, so last time we explored this circuit in front of you, okay? And uh, we, we, we get to know that VDS, the signal at the output here, at the output, at the drain has two components, you know, because we have uh, the biasing VGS, which is your DC. And uh, the signal to amplify, which is VGS small, which is pure EC. Okay. So the output itself VDS is also two components. One is DC, V, D, v, v capital, DS capital, this one. And one is pure EC, which is minus GM RD V input. And V input here, of course, is VGS. V small, GS small. Okay. And GM, you know, it's called uh, the transconductance, just like the GM that we explored in, in VGT amplifiers. And it's, uh, it's equal to KN VGS minus V threshold. And again, it's, uh, it's, it's calculated from the DC analysis, just like GM also was there in BGT. It was uh, IC over VT, again, IC of the DC uh, analysis. And the sense is the output is two distinct, distinct components, V capital, DS capital, which came from the analysis of the DC and the GM or DV input, which came purely from the EC analysis. So superposition uh, theorem, just uh, the circuit analysis can be applied. I mean, if you remember guys in super, superposition theorem, if you have two sources, you can cancel one, you know, can, uh, out, uh, calculate a voltage at some point, then cancel this, uh, the current one, and you know, they enable the previous one and calculate the voltage at same point, then the total voltage will be, you know, the addition of both voltages. This is what we have here, the addition of the two voltages. And when, when we can apply this, when we assume that the input is very small compared to VGS minus V threshold, as we, you know, uh, uh, verified last time or last lecture. Okay. So in the DC analysis, we will cancel all the AC sources and only deal with the DC sources. And the, in the AC analysis, we'll do the opposite. Okay. To, cal to, to calculate the, uh, the gain and our input and, our, and all other parameters of the amplifier. So the real picture would be something like this. We have here the transfer characteristic between VDS and VGS, V output and, and V input, okay? And you know, if the input is changing around the biasing point, V capital, VGS capital, GS capital, we will have uh, the Q point of VDS, which is pure DC, and around it there will be amplified signal, same version of the input, but amplified and out of phase by 180 degrees. So the, the, the AC output here is equal to minus GMR DVGS or V input. You know, this, this, this component. This is V small, VS small or V output. Okay. So here is the steps that we're gonna take to analyze any uh, amplifier circuit. Again, we have two steps, the DC analysis and the AC analysis. In the DC analysis, we should, we should verify that we are work, working really in the saturation because this is essential uh, assumption. If you are not working at saturation, we will have clipping, we have distortion in the output. Okay. And in the DC analysis, we cancel all EC sources. All the capacitors are replaced by shorts, uh, by open circuit. And after making the analysis and getting uh, the currents and the voltages, we calculate GM, the transconductance. Then we go to the DC, the AC analysis in which we do the opposite. We cancel all the DC, or so, all the DC sources. We replace a cap any capacitor with, uh, with a short circuit. And 
we replace the transistor by its equivalent circuit, small signal equivalent circuit. We have two uh, equivalent circuits for the transistor. We can use any, by the way. Okay. So the transistor has three terminals, uh, uh, the gate, the drain, and the source. So this is the first, uh, you know, version of the equivalent circuit. It's called the bimodal. And here is a second version, just like uh, BGT. We can redraw this in, in, in a similar fashion like this one. So we, we make the gate at the bottom and the source here and the drain here, okay? And between, between the drain and the source, there is uh, so between the drain and the gate, there is GMVGS. And this VGS. And between the source and the gate, we're gonna put a resistor, which is one over GM. You can use any of them. And the voltage of GM is one over GM is positive at the gate and the negative at the source. So this is the VGS in that direction, okay? And this is called the T model. Basically, you use the first one uh, in common source amplifiers and the common drain amplifiers. We use the second one mainly in common gate amplifiers. But again, you can use any in any configuration. Both are the same. Okay, actually, uh, this one is deduced from this one. You know, there is some uh, uh, derivation for it in the book. Okay, so let's take examples now. Or we'll let's first explore the basic config amplifier configurations. Okay, so the basic configuration we have the common source, common source. So the input is at the gate. Here is the input. And the output is at the drain. That's why it's called the common source. In the common gate amplifier, the input is at the source and the output is at the drain. This is just like common base in BGT. And this is like common emitter in BGT. And in common drain, which called uh, source follower, which is corresponding to common collector in BGT amplifiers. The input is at the gate and the output is at the source. Okay, so let's see now uh, examples. Mainly this lecture will be about common source amplifiers. Okay, the first configuration of our most transistor set amplifier circuits. And we, we have example of a common source amplifier in which the input is at the gate and the output is at the drain. And of course, the source is common. This is common source circuit. So the threshold voltage of that uh, um, uh, transistor is 0.4, gain is 4 milliampere, uh, and VGS is 0.6. So this, this battery here is 0.6 volt. So find GM and EV, number A, and num in number B, find the maximum swing at the input and the output. How far we can amplify it? Or how far can this input go? What is the maximum input that we can put? Remember, in amplifiers, we need always to work in saturation region. So we can just put any uh, 
input and you know expect that we have output which is amplified version of the input because we may go to saturation or cut off and in that case we will just see clipping or distortion okay so let's start by number a find gm and dv so we'll have the dc analysis And in the DC analysis, we're gonna, you know, verify that we are working in saturation. So we have to uh, calculate ID, then calculate VDS. So ID, assuming saturation is equal to Kn over two, VGS minus V threshold square. So this is equal to four over two, 0.6 minus 0.4, square so id will be equal to uh, 0 0.08 milliampere from the outer loop here this is vds and this is idrd so if we just continue here this battery is vdd so from this loop here we have vds plus idrd equal to VDD. So from this equation, VDS is equal to VDD minus IDRD. It will be equal to 0.4 volt. Let's compare it with VGS minus V threshold. So VGS minus V threshold is equal to 0.6 minus 0.4, it's 0.2. And of course, 0.4 is larger than 0.2, so it's it's really saturation. Now GM basically is Kn VGS minus V threshold. Kn is four milliampere per square voltage, and VGS is 0.6, and V threshold is 0.2, so this is all basically. Uh, 0.8 milli ohm minus one. Then we go to the AC analysis. You know, and find you know all the parameters of AC. So in AC, we're gonna cancel all the DC sources, which is just one source. Here. It's two sources, VDD and VGS. So we'll end up with that circuit here. Here is RD. Here is V input or VGS small. See V input at the end. Okay, and here is V output. Then we're gonna replace the transistor by its equivalent circuit. So here is the drain. Here is the gate, here is the source, here is VM, VGS, and here is VGS. Voltage between gate and source. And remember, there is nothing between gate and source. It's open circuit. Okay, between this is a source. Between the source, uh, you know, it's just connected to ground. Oh. And between the drain and the ground, there is RD. And the voltage is, is the output is at between the drain and the ground. So here is the output. And between the gate and the ground, there is the input. So basically number one, our input, because it's really easy, is just the infinity. So our input is here. This is our input, equal to V input over I input. I input is equal to zero. So this is equal to V input over I input. So without, you know, consuming much time, anything divided by zero is infinity. 
right? Which is very good thing. So the basic uh, advantage of common source amplifiers, you know, it has a very high input resistance, very high. And this is, you know, a common uh, uh, characteristics of most, most amplifiers because the gate source uh, resistance is, in, is infinity. It's a capacitor. And this is also a basic advantage of most transistors in general compared to BGD transistors. Good. Number two. Hello. So we're going to put... I'm sorry, this is out of question here. Gonna put here, uh, a source at the output terminal. It's equal to Vx, which reduces the current called by x. Then we will have Rd, and the Gm Vgs, and we're gonna cancel the source V input, so it will be short circuit. So VGS now, so this is equal to VX over IX, is equal to zero. So the current source VGS GM is also equal to zero. So it's just open circuit. So the current IX will just go here in RD. So VX over IX is equal to RD. And this is uh, moderate too high. So till this moment, this is an advantage because it's very high, which is good. But this is not advantage. Moderate to high, this is bad. And in here, it's uh, MOSFETs is similar to BGT. Common source is, is similar to common emitter. Both they have moderate to high output resistance, which is bad. Number three is the AV. AV is just equal to VO over V input. If we look, if we look here, this is the current that flows in RD is just GM VGS, but this will make a voltage drop positive negative, positive at the ground and negative at VO. So VO is minus GM VGS RD. And the VM would is just equal to VGS. Same terminals. This is the terminals of VM and this is the terminal of VGS. So same terminals. So this will go with this, this minus GM RD. In our case here, GM is uh, 0.8 milli, and RD is, how much is RD? Uh, I think it was 17.5 ah, kilo ohms, so 17.5 kilo ohms. This is a given, but I forgot to put it, okay? So 0.8 milli ohm multiplied by 17.5 kilo. So, Let's do this together. I think I have it, yeah. It's minus 14. And yeah, it's it's low. It's not good, like, it's not very high, like uh, BGT transistors, common emitter BGT transistors, usually lower. But they have the same phase shift out of phase, 180. Good. But of course, this can be fixed by, for example, choosing higher resistance, higher RD. Okay, so we can fix that. So this is all number one or number A. Now number B, the maximum swing in VO and VM. 
remember the transfer characteristics was something like this. This is VGS, V small GS capital because it's both AC and DC. And this is VDS, V small DS capital. Okay. This point is at V threshold, which in that case, point four. This point we don't know, it's VGS set. And now we are working at that point, at point six. If we go back here, VGS is equal to 0.6, yeah, 0.6. And VDS is 0.4. So at this point, we have 0.4. So basically, we can put signals until we reach either VGS or 0.4. We don't know. If VGS, for example, is uh, 2, then we can go forward uh, by 2 minus 0 0.6, which is 1.4. But backward, that part is only 0 0.2. So we are restricted by in, in decreasing the input by V threshold. And we are restricted increasing the input by VGS set the input at which we go into saturation. So there is limits. And this question is to know the limits. What is this limit? Of course, if we know that VGS set minus, minus 0.6 uh, is larger than 0 0.2, which is 0 0.6 minus 0.4, then the limit is 0 0.2 in input. And we can, we can calculate the corresponding uh, swing in the output. Good. So what we know is that at that point, if we have few, if if we assume that we have a you know a, a, an EC like this, the output will be something like this. So this is the minimum, VDS minimum, at which we go to the maximum here. So this change here, let's call it VDS minimum. It happens when VGS increases from that point to that point. So this is called this VGS maximum. So VDS minimum happens at when the, when input increases to VGS maximum. V small, GS small maximum. Or we can say V small DS capital. The signal, the whole signal, AC plus DC minimum happens at V small GS capital maximum, the whole signal, EC plus DC. And we know we shouldn't leave the saturation region. So VDS minimum must be larger than or equal VGS minus V threshold. But what is VDS minimum? Is it something in DC plus something in EC? So the DC is V capital, DC capital, which is point four, this point. Minus this portion, minus AV as a magnitude, multiplied by VGS maximum. Remember, we, we decreased when VGS increased. Because, it's of the, because they are out of phase, remember. When this is increasing, this is decreasing. 
you can say it's VDS plus EV uh, VGS maximum, and you know V VG V EV is minus, so it will be minus at the end, right? Larger than VGS V small GS capital. This is G maximum here. Equal to V capital GS capital is operating the point of VGS, which is point six plus. V small, GS small maximum, minus V threshold. This is point four. This is uh, how much? Uh, minus 14, so it will be 14. Multiplied by VGS maximum, which we wanna determine. Larger than or equal VGS capital, which is point six, plus VGS small maximum minus V threshold, which is 0.4. And from that uh, inequality here, we're going to find that VGS maximum is equal to 30 millivolt. Very small. So the maximum input is 0.6 plus 13 milli, which is 0.613. And the minimum input is 0.6 minus 13 milli. Okay. And this will be corresponding to AV. Uh, magnitude VGS maximum, so it will be uh, 14 multiplied by 13 milli. So this is this is VDS minimum, or VDS small minimum. And of course, minimum will be like the max, it's a symmetrical signal. So big to big uh, input is 13 millivolt multiplied by two, which is 26 millivolt. And the big to big output will be 14 multiplied by 13 millivolt multiplied by two as well. Okay. So this was the first example. Let's take another example. Here ID is known equal to 0.5 milliamperes. And V threshold of that transistor is one volt and the gain is one milliampere volt squared and VDD is 15. Find a V, R input and R out. Okay, first is DC analysis. So the capacitors are open circuit here and here. Okay, so VG, will be equal to 15. Remember the current here is zero in the gate. So this is series with this, RG1 is series with RG2. So VG is equal to 15 multiplied by RG2, which is uh, RG1, by the way, is seven mega ohm, and RG, and RG2, I'm sorry, and the RG1 is eight mega ohm. We usually choose them very big like this, and this for, for some reasons that we're gonna see afterwards. So VG will be uh, 15 multiplied by seven mega ohms over seven mega plus eight mega. So 15, seven over 15, it will be seven volt. And V is the voltage at that point is basically the voltage of the resistance. And remember, we know the current, the current is given ID half milliamperes. So VS is equal to ID Rs, so it's equal to half milliampere multiplied by Rs is 10 kilo ohms. I, I forgot to put it. And also Rd is 10 kilo ohms. So 10 multiplied by 10, uh, half multiplied by 10 kilo, it will be five uh, volt. So VGS, which is Vg minus Vs is equal to two. 
or five or seven minus five is two volt. VD, this point here is equal to 15 minus the voltage drop across RD. So 15 minus ID RD. So 15 minus half and 10, this will be five volt, uh, 10 volt or so. Or five volt, yeah, five volt. Oh, 15 minus, uh, minus five is 10. Yeah. So 10, uh, 10 multiplied by half is, is, is five and 15 minus five is 10. Okay, so VDS is equal to VD minus VS, 10 and the VS is five, this is five. And this is basically larger than VGS minus V threshold, which is, uh, Two minus one, which is one. So we are working in saturation. And GM is equal to KN VGS minus V threshold. VGS is one. And VGS minus V threshold is just one as well. So GM is one uh, milli ohm minus one because KN in milli. Number two, let's now draw the AC covalent circuit. So we have, we start first by the Covalent circuit of the transistor. GM, VGS. Here is VGS between the gate and the source. And here is the drain. Okay, between the drain and the ground, there is RD, 15. And here is VO between the drain and the ground. And between the source and the ground, there is a resistance RS. And between the gate and the ground, there is RG1 and RG2 barrel. So I will call them RG. And there is a source input, V input. Let's call it V input. And the RG here is RG1 parallel RG2, the seven mega ohm parallel with eight mega ohm, which is basically uh, 3.73 mega ohm, which is very big really. Okay, number one, Find uh, R input. R input is equal to RG. So here is V input. Here is I input. Or well, let's call it I or IG. Barrel V input over IG. So basically, R input is from these two points, this point and the ground. So it's equal to RG barrel. This is the resistance here, which is V input over IG. IG is zero. Anything divided by zero is infinity. So RG barrel infinity is just equal to RG and RG is RG1 barrel RG2, which is 3.73 mega ohm. Very big input. Very big R input, very big. As I said, most fits usually have very big input resistances, which is good. Number two, AV. AV is VO over V input. VO is the voltage across RD, so it's equal to this, the current that flows in RD. Remember, VGM, VGS is, is flowing from down to up, so it makes a voltage opposite to VO. So this minus GM, VGS, Rd divided by V input. Where is V input? V input is between this point and the ground. So it's equal to, so from that loop here, it's equal to VGS plus this voltage. 
which is this current multiplied by the resistance. What is this current? It's, it is just GMVGS because this current come here and there is open in that branch and so it will continue as a whole to that branch RS. So this is GM VGS RS. VGS with VGS with VGS will go away. So this will give us minus GM RD over one plus GM RS. And remember here to check on yourself. What is the new thing here? You know, in opposite to the last example. The new thing here is RS. In the last example, the source was connected directly to ground. So EV was just GMRD. So what happens here if we put RS equal to zero in that equation? If we put RS equal to zero, it will be minus GMRD over one plus zero, which is one. So it will be minus GMRD and that's it. Okay. So we can also calculate that because we know GM, we know RD and all other stuff. So it will be minus 10 over 11, which is 0.91. It's less than one. There is no amplification here. There is no amplification. And RS has a similar effect like RE, the degenerate resistance. If you guys remember in the common emitter, when we put RE, a resistor between the emitter and the ground, usually the EV reduces by some factor that is proportional to RE. Here, it's, it's also reduce, reducing by a factor proportional to RS. Okay, number three, RO. With RO, we put our Vx that generates by X between the Output terminals, so the output is between two, these two points, this point and the ground. Then we have RD. Then we have this guy. GM VGS. And we have RS. How about the other part? So in the other part, we're going to cancel V input. Since we bought uh, VX and IX. So we cancel the output, so it will be... Something like this. Here is RG. Remember here is VGS. So what happened? RG is in parallel with, with a short circuit, so it will be shorted, right? So we can just remove, well, let's draw it again. So this will be something like this. Vx and here is Ix of D and this will be just ground like this. So this is basically the gate because the gate is just connected to ground now. And here is VGS. We go down, I'm gonna remove this circuit here. We don't need it. So, what is the voltage across RS from that loop? RS has a voltage, negative positive, which is just VGS, right? Which will reduce current in that direction. This current is equal to VGS over RS. So in that branch, this branch here, there is a current going down, which is GM VGS. And another current going up. So at that point, both, both currents are going into the point. So does VGS over RS equal to zero. So from that, VGS GM plus one over RS equal to zero. So either VGS equal to zero or GM plus one RS equal to zero. Of course, GM is not equal to zero. And RS is a positive number and doesn't equal to zero as well. So this can't be, this can't happen. So VGS can equal to zero. 
So if VGS is equal to zero, so the current source GM VGS is equal to zero as well. So it's open circuit. So this whole circuit here can be reduced to the following. Vx Ix and Rd. That's it because now this guy is open circuit. So Ro, which is equal to Vx over Ix, is just equal to Rd. Which is 10 kilo ohms. Okay. So this is also a direct example. The third example is a little bit, uh, you know, uh, trickier or, or harder. It's, let's see. But again, uh, just need more work. It's not that hard. So what we have here, again, uh, a circuit, which has an input at the gate and the output is at the drain. So it is also a common source uh, amplifier. Now we have a load. So the other two circuits doesn't have loads. RD was a load. Here we have a load RL. And of course that will reduce the voltage gain as we will see. Just like the effect of our load on BGT amplifiers. So let's see. So the, uh, the transistor here has a feed threshold equal to 1.5 and Kn is equal to uh, 0.25 milliampere volts squared. Find a VR input and R out. Again, we're going to start by the DC analysis. So in the DC analysis, we're going to uh, remove all the AC sources and the capacitors. So we're going to end up with this circuit here. Or 10 mega ohms. Here is VDD which is 15, here is RD, 10 kilo ohms. Okay, here is IG here is equal to zero. And what is IG? IG is equal to VD minus VG over RG. Since it's equal to zero, so from that, VD must be equal to VG. So VD is equal to RG, VG. Since VD is equal to VG, so VDS must be equal to VGS. We just added minus VS here or minus VS here, so we don't need to do anything. So VDS must be larger than VGS minus V threshold. So we are working in saturation. If two numbers is equal to load, let's do that in another, just to clarify it. If you have two equal to two, so basically two is must, must be larger than two minus something, for example, minus one. Okay. What is ID? So let's calculate it. So ID equal to Kn over two, VGS minus V threshold. VGS is uh, how much? I think it's not known. Yeah, it's not, we're gonna reduce it. So this is VGS minus V threshold, which is I think one, 1 1.5 square. And the ID is also equal to from that, uh, this is VDS. So from that outer loop here, you have VDD equal to VDS plus ID RD. So you can say that ID is equal to VDD minus VDS over RD. which is basically 1.5 minus 0.1 VDS. So 1.5 minus 
minus point one VDS equal to point one two five, which is two point two five over two VGS square uh, one point five square would be uh, Oh, VGS or you know, 1.5 square, this would be plus, minus three VGS, okay? Remember that VGS is equal to VDS. So this is equal also 1.5 minus uh, 0.1 VGS. Now it's one unknown here. So in that part, the unknown is VGS, in that part also the unknown is VGS. So this will give us two, uh, Solutions, the first one is VDS or VGS equal to 414.41. Uh, and the second solution, VDS or VGS, both are the same, okay? Minus 2.21. So this is, of course, rejected because it's a negative. VDS cannot be negative while the transistor is on. And this will be accepted, okay? We can calculate current now, ID is equal to uh, 0.25 over 2, 4.41 minus 1.5 squared. This will give us 1.6 milliamperes. We can calculate also GM. GM is equal to KN VGS minus V threshold. So this is 2.4 and VGS is 4. 41 minus 1.5, so GM will be equal to 0.73 milli ohm minus one. Good. Now let's go to the AC part again. We're gonna reduce. We don't need this one. So the AC part number two. The AC analysis. Okay. First is the covalent circuit. So let's first re re draw the circuit by canceling uh, the DC sources and shorting the capacitors. So we're gonna have our load here. The capacitor is short. Then we're gonna have RD with, with ground. Source is also ground. Then we have this resistance, Rg. Then we have uh, the capacitor is short. Then Vm. I'm gonna draw the coupling circuit of the transistor and connect the rest. So Gm Vgs. And here is the gate, here is the drain, here is the source, and here is VGS between these two points. Then I'm gonna continue between the gate and the ground is VM boot. Between the gate and the drain, there is a resistor RD, which is a new thing here. And that's what makes the analysis a little bit difficult. We finished by the gate, now the drain connections. Between the drain and the ground, there is RD. And remember the source is grounded. And here is RD. And also between the drain and the ground, there is RL. And here is VO. Okay. Good. Let's start by the AV which is VO over V input. Good. Let's assume this current is I input. So we have two basic equations here. This node here has a voltage equal to VO, and this node has a voltage equal to V input. So I input equal to V input minus VO over RD. This point is the input. 
This point is V output and this is R2. This is number one. Another equation here is uh, uh, is the voltage of VO. So the, this I M would come here and has two branches. One component to go to Z, to, uh, Z branch and another component with VGS to GM. So I input is equal to first current is GM VGS. And the second current, which is goes in here, equal to the voltage across these two resistors over the barrel or, or divided by the barrel combination of these two resistors. So it's equal to VO over R. D parallel RL. I will call R D parallel RL. I will call it R. Okay. So from that, VO is equal to I input minus GM VGS multiplied by R. And R again is R D parallel RL. This is number two. I will put now one and two. So I will remove I input and put this value. So VO. So let's write this clearly. And this is number two. Substitute. Then substitute. One and two. So remove I input and put Vn minus VO over Rd. So VO is equal to R V input minus V output over Rd minus Gm VGS uh, R. And remember V input here. This is V input. V input is just equal to VGS. So we can remove any and both the other. So let's remove VGS and put V input. just to make us more consistent. So VGS equal to VM, okay? Good. Remember EV is VO over V input. So I will divide the both, uh, both uh, terms or all the terms by V input. So if we divide by V input, we're gonna get here EV equal to R over RD, and here is uh, or let's let's yeah let's first combine yeah let's combine VO on one uh, one side and all the other stuff on the other side, and then divide by VMO. So VO then one plus from here we're gonna get R over RD. equal to V input and R over RD minus GM R. Then we can divide now by V input. So VO over V input, which is EV equal to R over RD minus GM R over one plus R over RD. We can take minus GMR as a common factor, minus GM R, and remember R is RD barrel RL. And this will give us here uh, one minus one over GM R G. Oh, I'm sorry. This is guy RG, not RD. I am very sorry here. Oh, this is RG. This is this resistor here, RG. Okay, so this will miss many things here. So what else should be changed? Yeah, this should be RG. 
not rd so this will be also rg not rd yeah this should be rg what else yeah any rd will be rg Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's it, so it is RG, RG. Okay, so this is RG here, and one plus R over RG. As well, let's write it. R over RG. One note here is this term is approximately one. Let's see why. First, one over GM RG, it's one over uh, 0.73 multiplied by 10 mega ohm. So it's just one over. Uh, 7.3 million. So this is basically much less less than one. Okay. And R over RG, remember R is RL barrel RD. RG is 10 mega ohm. RL is 10 kilo and RD is 10 kilo. So the combination is 5 kilo. Okay. And this is 10 to the power 7. So this is again uh, much less less than one. Okay, so AV is approximately equal to minus GM R, which is RD barrel RL. You can of course do it. It will be you know it just it will be just one, one minus point zero 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 one. You know it's one out of million. Okay, which is one. It's 0.9999. And again for the denominator. So it would be again 1.000000, you know. <laughs> so it's just one. So AV is, uh, uh, what would be AV? Yeah. Uh, 0.73 multiplied by 5 kilo ohms. Remember, this is milli ohms. Okay, our input basically is V input over I input, okay? Remember the output is AV, V input. And from the Kirchhoff here, from that big loop, big loop, we will find that V input equal to the voltage across RG plus VO. So this is basically equal, V out is equal to V input minus the voltage drop across RG, which is I input RG. So let's divide both uh, by I input. So AV, V input over I input equal to V input over I input. Minus RG. What is V input over I input? It is R input. So AV, R input. Remember, we know AV minus GMR, RD, barrel RL, equal to R input 
minus RG. So from Z, uh, our input uh, AV minus one equal to minus RG. So our input equal to uh, RG over one minus AV. Okay, so our input equal to RG over one minus, here is minus GM uh, R, which is RD parallel RM. Okay, so this is basically RG over one plus GM RD barrel RL. And we're gonna calculate its value. It will be 2.1 mega ohm. Very big as usual. Number three, RO. For RO, we're gonna cancel the input and replace our input RL, I'm sorry, by VX IX. So from that same circuit, so let's copy and paste. So we're gonna remove our L. And the input will be just short. And we're gonna put VX IX. This will be shorted. So basically VGS is zero now. So VGS is zero. Because this is the gate, this is the source. We are both connected to each other. So VG minus VS is zero. And RO is VX over IX. When VGS equal to zero, this means that GM VGS is also equal to zero. So this is open. open circuit. So this circuit will be reduced to the following. Vx, Ix, Rd, and here is Rg. So Vx over Ix is basically Rd, Barrel RG. Of course, the 10 kilo ohms, the barrel 10 mega ohms is just 10 kilo ohms. Don't try it, okay? It will be 9.9999 kilo, so it's still. So this will be approximately equal to RD, which is 10 kilo ohms. Okay, guys, so this is basically uh, the common uh, source amplifiers, okay? It has, you know, moderate to low uh, amplification gain. It has very good input resistance. It has moderate to high output resistance, okay? So it beats common emitter if we compare it to common emitter, because it's, you know, it's analogous to common emitter. It beats it in the R input. Same R output, but it has less, we can say less, but we can manage that. I mean, we can play with RD, but as we see, most of the time, it's a very low value, okay? We also try to put RS, and again, it was similar to the degenerate resistance RE in common emitter amplifiers. It also reduces the gain, okay? But makes EV less sensitive to GM, if we assume that GM is sensitive to heat or something, okay?